also at Horror Hound uh, in line, well, I've got the official shirt, which has a, what I've dubbed Dog Tortong on it, because it's a dog, uh, it's a hound, and uh, it's Dr. Tongue, so Dog Tortong. And uh, they also have the special uh, event Horror Hound issue for this particular Horror Hound. They were selling the, the Elvira one from the, the Horror Hound Cincinnati one, but uh, I really wanted this one, and I wanted to spend my money on other things, but this was really cool. Has some cool posters in it, some cool articles about how to survive a convention and uh, Day of the Dead retrospective and stuff like that. It's very cool. And also at Horror Hunt Weekend, I got the chance to talk to uh, a couple of cool independent film directors and uh, one cool uh, horror artist, which you can see if you have the Horror Hound uh, Indianapolis DVD for the first Horror Hound that was ever done. You can see uh, this particular artist in that putrid. Putrid's an amazing artist, and he gets his influence from like a lot of black metal stuff and uh, old-school 80s horror films and 70s horror films and uh, like even the old DC comic stuff, like uh, the artist Ghastly and stuff like that. It really shows off in his work, and that's why I enjoy his work so much. I bought this print from him, which uh, I don't know if you can see it, but he signed this for me. I also bought uh, his uh, Mark of the Werewolf uh, t-shirt that he, he did the artwork for. A very cool shirt. You'll probably see me wearing that here in a couple of the movie morgues, um, and although I didn't get any any autographs this time, as my wife and I were walking to the, the mask uh, hall, there's actually a cool moment that I had where I walked right next to Gregory Nicotero and Count Gore Duval. That was probably one of the highlights. That, and as I was standing in line, uh, my, wife and, uh, my wife and I were standing in line, Cassandra Peterson, who plays Elvira, walked by uh, with no costume or makeup on and sunglasses, and I instantly recognized her and smiled, and she smiled back, so that was cool. Um, and also, as I mentioned, uh, I did have some DVD acquisitions. Lloyd Kaufman of Troma was uh, at this convention this time. I bought this uh, Poultry Geist on Blu-ray. Uh, the picture's phenomenal. I've already checked it out. Um, but uh, I did not stay around for Lloyd either. Money was spent by then. Uh, but I had a great time. Bought this. Uh, I talked to a couple of independent film directors. I talked to the director of Girl Number 3, which uh, if you read Horror Hound, you'll have read that this is actually a comic book first, and uh, they turned a movie out, uh, made it into a movie. Uh, it's kind of an anti-slasher. Um, and, um, I mean, this film overall wasn't bad. It's in black and white, even though all the, uh, the cover art is, and uh, still photos on the back are in color, uh, which was cool. Uh, this film wasn't bad, but I think it could have been done a little bit better. Uh, but I still enjoyed this film uh, enough to have enjoyed buying it, and it was good to talk to the director. I wish I could have actually gone to the screening, but uh, taking it home and enjoying it was uh, equally as good. Um, out of my all of my movie acquisitions at this Horror Hound, this was probably the best and most unexpected. Uh, the director himself, I, I happen to notice, recognize the artwork uh, on the cover from a previous issue of Horror Hound, where they were uh, air, uh, showing this film and selling it. I happened to see it in a, in a picture. And uh, it piqued my interest because it reminded me a lot of House with the cover artwork. And this film is kind of like the old 80s movie House, but with uh, Twisted Beetlejuice. And it, it's like that, but on, on the LSD. It's a great movie uh, for a low-budget movie. Very well done. Great production value. Uh, the director was very cool, very, you know very passive about, you know, telling us about the movie and it's like, here's what it's about, you know, check out the trailer uh, uh, on the on the monitor there, it's really cool. And I'm really glad I bought this film because uh, this is definitely worth your time and money. It definitely has a lot of comedic elements in it, but that's what makes this film so good and stand apart. It's a demonic comedy with a heart of gold. Uh, definitely worth checking this out. I highly, highly recommend this movie if you happen to be at a convention or... Uh, uh, I don't know if they have a website. Yeah, they have a website on here. I'm sure you can order it from there. Uh, but this movie is definitely worth your money, uh, even at $10. I bought it for $10 at the convention. They even have it on Blu-ray uh, for $20, uh, at least at the convention it was $20 on Blu-ray. Definitely worth your time and money. Great movie. Check it out. And uh, one more thing I'd like to cover um, before we close out is something I've acquired recently. It's uh, Erie Vaughn's uh, Misery Obscura. This book is uh, from uh, Dark Horse Books, and it's a compilation of photography uh, photographs that Erie Vaughn 
which those of you who don't know, he uh, he first he started photographing the Misfits. Uh, he was their unofficial photographer back when the Misfits uh, back in their early days, and uh, he went on to play uh, uh, bass guitar for uh, uh, Sa uh, Sam Hain or Sawin, whichever however you pronounce it. Uh, I say it both ways. Uh, with Glenn Danzig, that was his band after the Misfits that uh, not a lot of people know about, and they really should because they're an awesome band, more of a uh, darker band with goth rock elements, whereas Danzig's more on the metal side of things. And Erie actually went on to play with uh, with Danzig up through the first four albums. And uh, Erie now he's a solo artist and he does artist uh, artwork. Um, my wife and I have a few of his prints around. Really amazing artwork, uh, unique and cool at the same time. Uh, but this book follows Erie Vaughn through his days photographing the Misfits all the way through uh, his time with Sam Hain and Danzig and beyond. Uh, I definitely recommend picking this book up. It's a great way. You feel like the, it's written in such a way that you feel like you're a part of it. And that's what's really cool about it because who didn't want to hang out with the Misfits back then or, or Danzig or Sam Hain or any of these people? Uh, all very, very cool. In fact, there's also great shots in here of Rob Zombie hanging out with Danzig uh, around the uh, Danzig three days when uh, Danzig went to go talk to, with H.R. Giger. Uh, and uh, apparently uh, White Zombie and Danzig went on tour together. Uh, uh, and there's shots of Marilyn Manson in here hanging out with uh, the crew. And uh, oddly enough, before Jesse James was a uh, cycle professional, these are some of my favorites. Uh, the Misfits, uh, in their early days, after a show at McDonald's late at night, chowing down on cheeseburgers and acting crazy. Uh, it's my dream to reenact these pictures someday. Um, but, I mean, just great live photography uh, during the, the Misfit days. Uh, I mean, it talks about the DIY stuff. The skeleton gloves that Glenn have, those were made by himself. The armbands were made themselves uh, by themselves. Um, they made their own T-shirts. Uh, they made their own instruments. There wasn't a lot of things that these people didn't do on their own. Um, there's also a small segment here uh, of Irivan's old band shortly after, the, or shortly during and after the time of the Misfits, uh, Rosemary Babies, and more more people, uh, Metallica, and as I was saying, Jesse James is in here. He ran security before uh, he got famous on Monster Garage, and then here's another amazing picture. Evil Elvis visiting Elvis's grave because Danzig, as you may or may not know, is referred to as Evil Elvis often. Uh, he often refers to himself as Evil Elvis, and uh, he's a huge Elvis fan, so he went to go visit uh, his grave in Graceland. And this is a very cool picture of uh, Gwen kneeling next to Elvis's grave. And again, the name of the book is Misery Obscura, from, available from Dark Horse Books. Uh, you can find it on Amazon for a decent price. Pick it up, check it out. If you're a fan of the Misfits, Sam Hain, Danzig, uh, Rosemary's Babies, any of those bands, definitely worth your time. And that's all I've got for now. Um, stay tuned, and uh, hopefully I'll have uh, a lot more Uber Demons Movie Wars coming in the future. See you next time.